to the first day of the Red Sarah Check Tournament, what I like to call Thrilling Thursday. My name is Adir Pinchot, alongside my friend and former Max Live president, Benny Stadman. We're here for a tier two qualifying matchup between the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem from Beachwood, Ohio, and the Sky High Hawks from San Diego, California. We thank the Sky High Hawks for bringing this gorgeous weather here to New York City. The Sky High Hawks coming in six in six. We're not in Saracek last year, so they're gonna be looking to make a deep run. Hopefully, if they win today, they can get a chance to play in tier two. On the flip side, the Mayhem are 11 and nine on the season, and they have never won a tier two championship. They've gotten close. Their best finish in Saracek was a tier two second place finish, so they're gonna look to bring home the tier two crown. It starts here today. They'll need a win in order to play uh, for the tier two championship. Uh, Benny, what can you tell us about Fuchs and what they'll need to do uh, in their style of play? Well, I had the chance to talk to Coach Gardner this year. Coach Gardner is the first year coach for Fuchs, and I asked him, are you going to change up the offensive system that we've seen from this Fuchs team the past two Saracheks? And what he told me is, no, these are, this is the game we play. We played our strength. We play a man-to-man -man defense. We're going to try to force turnovers and push in transition. And if we do that, I think that we will win the game. That's what the coach told me. On the flip side, the Sky High Hawks play a very different style. They like to slow the ball down, uh, play a half-court set, and pound the ball inside. Who do they pound it into? They pound it into Yakir Silverman. The Silverman is a handful for opposing defenses. The big guy is averaging a double-double, 18 points, and nearly 11 rebounds uh, a game. The guy is a monster underneath, so may the Mayhem are really going to have to pay attention. Benny, what do you think they'll have to do to stop him? The Mayhem's X Factor for today is going to be center Shmuley Witkis. Witkis averaging 13 points and 11 rebounds over the season, a double-double. Uh, coach told me that he needs to defend the boards and he needs to play great defense on Silverman. If they do that, they're going to be clear for this game and they'll look to move on to a Tier 2 qualifier tomorrow. So yeah, Keir Silverman, definitely someone they have to shut down. Witkis is going to be huge. Another huge player for the Mayhem is Albert Waxman. I saw this guy play in the tournament this last year. The guy has got style, the guy has got flair. I'm not sure he made a single pass in the tournament last year that wasn't a no-look pass. The guy has got a lot of style, but there's also a lot of substance to his game. He's the leading scorer for Fuchs with 18 points, so we'll see what he does. Again, a dear pin shot, Benny Stammen. Welcome to Saracek. We'll be back in a few minutes with this matchup between the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem and the Sky High Hawks. Where are you gonna get such a thing? You have a yeshiva university where you have students come together in a university yeshiva setting. 150 guys at a tish, rocking, singing, really getting involved in what the Shabbos experience is. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center, 186th in Amsterdam. Thrilling Thursday, day one of the Red, Red Saracek tournament. My name is Adir Pinshot, alongside my close friend and former Max Live president, Benny Statman. This game will be featuring the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem and the Sky High Hawks. Fuchs coming in from the Midwest, Beachwood, Ohio, is their home spot. And Sky High coming in from San Diego, bringing the weather with them to sunny New York. This should be quite the matchup. The winner of today's game will enter into Tier 2 with a chance to play for a Tier 2 championship. The loser will drop down a tier. Sky High not in the tournament last year, uh, so they will be looking to make their mark. And the Mayhem, as we mentioned in the pregame, their best finish in Saratech is a Tier 2 second place finish coming two years ago. So they're looking to take home the Tier 2 crown. And as the teams begin to come out, we see Fuchs in the white jerseys and Sky High in the blue jerseys. Uh, the starters for Sky High, we have Gershon Brookler, Yakir Silverman, Harel Amsalam, Alex Safia, Ezra Arovas. And for Fuchs, we have Shmuley Witkiss, Albert Waxman, Gavriel, uh, sorry, Jacob Sobel, Alan Sokloff, and Elon Sanders. Taking up the ball is Albert Waxman for the mayhem. Pass to the corner, the three up by Jacob Sobel off the 
top bar, no good. Rebound reeled in by number 15, Alex Sefia. Here comes Sefia going hard to the bucket. Blocking fall called and one. Sefia gets it to go, knocking it in and a good start for Sky High. And speaking to Sefia before the game, he is one of the uh, Hawks' leading scorers and he leads the team in, a, in, a, in assists. I, I, I asked him, do you look more to attack or to addition? And he says he'll give what, he'll take what the defense will give him. And he did that just right there, taking it to the hole. Sefia averaging 12 points per game and six assists as he converts on the and one. Three nothing, sky high. Only a few seconds into this game. Here comes the mayhem into their attack. Waxman not shy, firing up from three, no good, but Senders reeling in the rebound. And promptly turns the ball over. And it nearly goes back to the other way. Some good pressure early on from the mayhem. But the ball is out of bounds off of Gershon Brookler. And that is exactly what we expected to see out of the mayhem as uh, Coach Gogo Silverstein of the Sky High Hawks calls a quick 30-second timeout uh, very early into the game, only 42 seconds into the game. Uh, with And Sky High now leading 3-0. to zero. Uh, It was interesting, before the game, Coach Gogo told me that he actually really trusts the team and he will often let them play without saying anything. So it's very interesting to see him call a timeout so early into this game. Definitely an interesting move to call timeout. I will tell you, Benny, though, as a former player in Sarachek, there's a lot of jitters, a lot of adrenaline going, playing in front of the big crowd, uh, game broadcasting, et cetera, et cetera. So it could be just sort of trying to calm the players down, let them have a couple of minutes of action, calm them, you know, timeout, bring them back, uh, uh, and calm them down. So we'll see if that pays off here for the Sky High Hawks. Some nifty passing on the inside, but they kick it back out. Pressure from Waxman. Ball nearly stolen away. And it finally is Albert Waxman and with a steal. And that's exactly what we expected. We expected Fuchs to come out, press the ball, and that's what they did. They actually weren't in a man. They switched to a 1-2-2 zone, it looked like. Non-characteristic from what we heard. But it's paying off so far. Another turnover. So some turnovers in the early going, probably due to some of that jitters. Some nifty ball handling there. As Sefia kicks it out to the corner, the three by Harrell Amsalem is no good. And even though that shot did not go down, that's the shot you want to see. Sefia with a floater looking to bank it in, no good. Fights for the rebound, but it ends up in the hands of Alan Sokloff. Here's Senders now. The big guy can handle the ball, going hard to the bucket, and he gets bumped. Blocking foul called, I believe, on Alex Sefia. And it's going to be interesting to see what the Mayhem will do in the half-court offense. We know they love to push it in transition, but to see what they're going to put in the half-court offense uh, should be very interesting. Three from Wax from the corner, back off the back iron, clanks out. Waxman has got some moves. He was a key player on the Mayhem last year, averaging their leading scorer this year, averaging 18-plus points per game. An errant pass sails out of bounds. Jacob Sobel. Couldn't find the man inside. Yeah, and uh, Sefia there, uh, you know, tried to say that it was off Fuchs, but uh, the ref said, no, it's going the other way. Senders taking it up, finding a corner three. And interestingly enough, Sobel disappointed with that three-point attempt from the corner. Uh, something to note, uh, Benny, there's a quirk in this uh, Max Live gym. Yeah, the, we have the cross beam going kind of diagonally out from the hoop, so that side three will often, if you put enough arc on it, will hit that bar, uh, and that is out of bounds. And it's uh, a shooter like Jacob Sobel, who, as we saw there, likes to put arc on his shot. It's, uh, it's something to contend with. So we'll see. Maybe he'll move out of the corner to give himself some more airspace to loft or launch that three-point shot. Alex Sefia going hard to the hole. This guy is attacking in the early going, and he will go to the foul line for two more free throws. Yeah, Sefia there. He, we've seen him attack now on two plays, draw contact, and he is not afraid. Uh, he's been kicking it out. He's been doing it all so far. Uh, and, and he could be one of the big keys to success for the Hawks today. So 3 nothing still. No scoring since Sefia's and one. His free throw is off the mark. Excuse me, that looked like it must have been a one and one. It was not no. a one and one actually. It's way too early for a one and one. No, that was uh, his second free throw. It did not that was go his in, second free throw. Yes. Thank you, Benny. Uh, here's Sobel now looking for another three. Instead sends it into the big guy, Wexler, who is fouled. And, and he will go to the free throw line. And that was uh, uh, Shmuley Whitkiss, actually, uh, who, who went up, got his own rebound. Uh, and he's, a, he's the X Factor who we talked about before the game. So you like to see him getting involved early, trying to put some points on the board for Fuchs. Fuchs looking for their first points of the tournament. No good off to the right. Shmuley can't get the free throw to fall. Foul shots. 
And the second free throw is up off the back iron. No good. Sefia with the rebound. Well, oh, he goes behind the back. This guy's got some handles. Here comes Sefia looking to attack. Euro step. Looked pretty, but the refs weren't going to allow it. Yeah, the Sarachek refs uh, historically are very tight on their travels. You're not going to get away with some of the stuff you can get away with in the NBA. Uh, but what I really like there, Sefia rebounding. He's, that's his second or third rebound of the game already, skying high and taking it all the way. And you'll notice Senders likes to bring the ball up for the mayhem. He's a big guy but can handle and pass with great accuracy. A scrum on the inside of fouls called as Shmuley Witkis was operating. Excuse me, a travel. Three seconds in the lane uh, is called on Shmuley Witkis, who was trying to get the shot up, but good active defense by Sky High down low. Four minutes and 51 seconds left in this first quarter. 3 nothing Sky High with the early lead. The only point so far of an Alex Sefia's and one. That shot is off the mark. Yakir Silverman couldn't get it to go for the Hawks, the big guy on the inside. His first shot of the game, and here's another three-pointer from Sobel. Moved out of the corner to create some more space, but nothing but air, but an offensive rebound reeled in by the Mayhem. The Mayhem are taking their time. They're going to reset their offense. Uh, there's no shot clock in Sarachek, so they're going to take the time, reset, and, and run their offense. Sky High playing a 3-2 zone. Some excellent ball movements, movement. Senders finds himself on the right block and converts for two. And I talked about before, we wanted to see what Mizrahi could do in a half-court set, and they just executed that play to perfection, getting a beautiful layup by Senders. Sefia, long distance, three, no good. Here comes Senders, and he'll push on his own. But his coach didn't want it. Coach Gardner calling a timeout with three minutes, 52 seconds left in the first quarter. Not a lot of scoring so far. 3-2 sky high. Uh, and Benny, we've seen uh, not a lot of offense here in the early going. Uh, could be due to some jitters, perhaps. Um, what do you think uh, these teams are going to try to do in terms of getting offensive ignited, offenses ignited and trying to get some points on the scoreboard? Yeah, well, definitely we see it a lot with teams having pregame jitters. But I think each team is going to go to where they feel comfortable as the game progresses. You're going to look. We've seen a lot of Sofia for, for the Hawks attacking the basket, but I think they're going to get a little bit more relaxed, go into their half-court offense, get the ball into Yakir Silverman. And from the Mayhem, I think they looked, they, they're looked. they starting already to settle in now. They just ran a beautiful half-court play, but look to see more pressure from them on the defensive end. The Mayhem have been looking Jacob Sobel to knock down a three. Hasn't hit one yet, but if he gets going, he can be dangerous from beyond the arc. Checked in the game now, number 23, Aaron Waxman, brother of Albert Waxman. And uh, Sobel throws it away, but gets it back. Now up to Senders. Senders says, hey, boys, let's calm this down. No more turnovers. Senders straight to the bucket, lays it up off the glass. The kiss! And that was a beautiful drive by Senders. He has all four points for Fuchs right now. And with only 3.26 left to go in the first quarter, uh, he's going to look to get some more. Alex Sefia breaking the press on his own and then getting bowled over by Senders. The Hawks pounding it inside, and Silverman finally on the third effort. Yakir Silverman gets it to go. You know, that was a third effort right there, getting the offensive board. You like to see that activity from Sky High down low, and that's one of the things that they're going to need to do if they want to advance. That was Yakir Silverman and Ezra Arovas pounding it inside, and a turnover now. The ball will go back to Sky High. Sky High will look to now pound it in. We mentioned in the pregame. They like to run a half-court set. They like to pound it in uh, to Silverman. Uh, Rovest also likes to get involved. Uh, so they had it finally for the first time during this game in the last possession. Uh, I assume they'll go to the same thing. Mayhem now with a full-court man-to-man press. The trap at half-court. Nice pass by Sefia. Joey Aaron probing. Looking for the big man, Silverman. Silverman looking back to Joey. And Joey puts it in some beautiful two-man game. Uh, Silverman received the pass from Joey Aaron at the free throw line, and then Aaron sneaking down the baseline finds himself wide open for a two. And a beautiful play. Uh, Silverman showing right there that not only can he score and rebound, but he can pass as well. And here is Waxman with a long three, no good. And the rebound to Silverman, who gives it to Sefia. So a little more scoring now. It was a drought in the beginning of the game, but now with two minutes left, we've got 7 4 sky high leading the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. Oh, Sefia with a no-look pass to his big man Silverman at the, at the right elbow. Wasn't ready, 
and it sailed through his hands. Here comes Senders bowling his way through. Looks like a blocking foul. That guy is a lot to handle when he comes up the court with a full head of steam. You don't want to get in his way. There Sky High attempted to stop him, but get called for a blocking foul. And here's the beautiful bounce pass. Beautiful bounce pass into the middle. Shimmy Jacoby finishing with the right hand. And Fuchs, oh, looking to get as uh, Senders is called for a tripping foul. Sends uh, Sefia tumbling into the, into the crowd over there. Well, we've seen the last few minutes the Mayhem like to put the pressure on, but it doesn't look like they have an answer for the ball handling of Alex Sefia, who has been weaving, winding and weaving through their press. So there they tried to get in front of him, but the feet just not quick enough, and they were called for the blocking foul. Another turnover, a costly turnover here for Sky High. And again, I think this is still pregame jitters. A lot of passes just going through players' hands as Senders pulls up for uh, elbow jumper, nails it. Oh, sweet stuff by Elon Senders, and he is fired up. 8-7, Fuchs with their first lead of the game with 1.28 left in the first quarter. Senders, you can see the vocal leader on this team turn to the crowd after he hit that jumper, did a little bit of a chest bump uh, and motion for the crowd to get into it. And right there, Waxman called for a foul. Uh, that is Aaron Waxman, Albert, and a quick travel call there. Uh, and the ball will be going right back to Fuchs. Joey Aaron received the ball and neglected to put it down before he took a couple steps. So the refs caught on the ball will go back to the Mizrahi mayhem. Here's Waxman from deep, nothing but net, swish. And that is a beautiful shot. You've seen him shoot it from there already a few times. And it's, it feels good to hit your first one, get yourself rolling. And again, another sky high player tumbling over. That was Joey Aaron uh, being tripped up and tumbling. And that's already uh, six fouls on Fuchs in this first quarter. Aaron Waxman lining up a three-pointer. The guy can shoot if he's open. So Sky High has been giving the mayhem the three-pointers. They haven't been making yet, but looks like they're starting to convert. Sky High needs a bucket. They've been in a little bit of a drought. They've been stuck on seven for the last couple minutes. Some costly turnovers are going to have to take better care of the ball and work, try to work the ball inside. Uh, to note, yeah, Kier Silverman, their big man, is not in the game at the moment. Three-pointer from Sefia is way off. Here come the mayhem. Aaron Waxman leading the break and wisely setting it up. And now a three-pointer from straight away is no good. But it is tipped in by Shimmy Jacoby, one-handing it after jumping up and just tipping it back in. 13-7, Fuchs Mizrahi with under a minute left in the first quarter. Sefia, the pick from Adam Wexler. Joey Aaron now looking. Lob pass to Sefia. The Mayhem with their active zone have been giving a lot of problems getting into the passing lanes here. And another turnover, costly turnover, as Joey Aaron was looking for his teammate, Aksafia sent it sailing over his head into the crowd. Yeah, that ball was airmail. That one almost came into uh, our broadcast booth, actually. So the Mayhem zone defense giving Sky High a lot of problems, but here's a, here's a steal from Harel Amsalem. Hamsalem going strong to the bucket. Blocking foul is called. Senders trying to take the charge, but just a little slow in sliding in front of the cutting Harrell Amsala. Yeah, you like, you like that, uh, the try by, by Senders trying to get in there, but he was still moving uh, as Amsalam came in there. Uh, beautiful steal by Amsalam on the, other, on the other end, getting the steal and trying to take it all the way. And Amsalam now at the free throw line. First one is no good. And checking back into the game is the big man, Yakir Silverman, coming in for number 42, Ezra Arovas. And Sky High right now only shooting one for four, 25% from the free throw line. If they want to get back in the game, they got to hit their free throws. Now going one for five, only shooting 20% on the day. Uh, those five free throws are the difference right now. It's a six-point difference to be exact, but big difference between a one-point game and a six-point game at the buzzer. No shot off for the mayhem. So 13-7, Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem over the Sky High Hawks. End of the first quarter. We'll be back in just a few moments with...
Welcome, welcome back to the Max Stern Athletic Center. First day of Saracek 2016. The gym is hot, being that it's something like 75 degrees outside. My name is Adir Pinchon alongside Benny Stab. And at the end of the first quarter, we've got the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem 13, Sky High Hawk 7. Benny, Sky High got off to a good start early. They were up, uh, but they've been stuck on seven for really a majority of the first quarter. What do they need to do going forward to try to stop the Fuchs Mizrahi attack uh, and then generate some offense for themselves? Well, we talked about in our pregame show that the Sky High Hawks were going to try to pound it inside, and they have not done that yet. We saw Yakir Silverman actually sit out for a decent portion in that in that first quarter. Uh, so we're going to hope. That I, I think Sky High needs to get him in. And on the other side of the ball, Fuchs Mizrahi uh, had had uh, Elon Sender score six points, but he now has two fouls, uh, which uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they how they play him. He's currently sitting on the bench. Uh, it's going inter to be interesting to see when they reinsert him into the lineup. And Sky High has not been having a problem getting it past half court against the Mayhem pressure. Their problem is once they get half court, uh, finding passing lanes against the Mayhem defense. The Mayhem have been keeping their hands in the passing lanes and creating a lot of turnovers. Sky High finally get a shot up, but it's no good. The Mayhem bring it the other way. And as we predicted, the Hawks go immediately to Silverman, uh, but he's unable to hit there. The three-pointer from Sokolov is no good. And the rebound to Sky High. Sefia, the point guard, to bring it up. This guy's got some moves, but has been stifled as of late. Three-pointer now from the corner, also no good. That was Adam Wexler for the Hawks. And Adam Wexler, younger brother of former uh, Hawk, Stephen Wexler, now a YU student. And a nice take, rolling around the rim and in. Ad Alan Sokolov taking it strong, creating some contact, and then finishing with the right hand. 15-7, Fuchs now an eight-point lead. And it's nice to see Sokolov, after missing a three on that last trip down, not, not going to just stay there on the line, but actually go at t attack the hoop and score. Waxman with a no beautiful no-look pass to Sobel, who can't get it to go. The foul called against Alex Sefia, who can't believe it. And I think he knows that he fouled him on that play, uh, but he just felt very excited and, and kind of just ran over to the bench. And he'll get it looks like, what looks like a warning from the referee. Nice defense. He looks like Sefia thought that he had properly disrupted the shot, but the foul is called. Jacob Sobel will go to the line. A beautiful play. The Mayhem creating a turnover, diving on the ground for the loose ball, and then getting a fast break going the other way. And Coach Gogo there over on the sideline talking to the ref. He doesn't think that Sefia deserved uh, a warning there. He thinks, you know, the players wanted to show a little bit of emotion, and he's okay with that. And uh, two free throws knocked down by Jacob Sobel, no doubt about it. And Sefia, a nice move, creating some contact against Sobel. Now, a very smart play by Sefia. Kind of knows that the guy is right on his hip and kind of just moves to the left, slows down, lets the guy run right into him. Interestingly enough, Sefia went over and, and it looked like he was giving some tips to Sobel about maybe how to slow him down. That was interesting. I wonder what he said to him. But Sefia will go to the line now, being that sky high is in the bonus. I, I think he might have just told him, uh, you were my latest victim of uh, trickery. That is possible. 17-7. Sky High looking to score for the first time in quite a while, and Sefia converts on the first free throw. The lead back down, the deficit for Sky High back down to nine. In the game, receiving some guidance on the sideline is Noah Forrell, number five, who checked in for Sobel. Here comes Albert Waxman, a nice pass up ahead to Blau. Blau can't handle it. Here comes Sky High. Safia splitting the defense. Kicks it out, but a travel is called on number 30, Tani Kaplan. And with 6.34 remaining, Fuchs uh, has already fouled Sky High eight times. They're going to be, Sky High will be shooting uh, one and one and then two free throws for the rest of the, of the half. And you got you to gotta get the ball inside and, and attack it and hope to just get some points at the free throw line at this point. Uh, the pass is turned over. Sky High with the steal. Alan Soklov made a big mistake in leaving his feet, forcing him to make a pass quickly. Couldn't convert. And here comes Sky High. Oh, a beautiful set there from Sky High. Uriel Green. Yeah, and uh, Sefia sent a bullet right there 
uh, to Green, and he just turned around right at the free throw line and put it up and put it in. Waxman from long range off the right side of the rim and no good. And the foul is called as the Mayhem were tr attempting to trap. But you saw Sky High in need of a basket. Uh, looked like that was a, a, a drawn up quick hitter. You saw Uriel Green found him, found his way right to the free throw line, caught it, and, and really before he even turned around, had shot that one. Nothing but the bottom of the net. So we got 17-11, six point lead now for Fuchs as a timeout is called. And we will go to a commercial during this full timeout. Six point lead for Fuchs. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Max Turner Athletic Center on the Wilf campus of Yeshiva University. First day of Saracek. We have a few scores to fill you in on here. My partner, Benny Statman. Uh, so we had a, a Tier 2 qualifier between the, the Ida Crown Aces and the Atlanta Jaguars. Uh, Ida Crown cruising to a comfortable 61-30 to victory. They'll advance to a Tier 2 qualifier, while Atlanta will fall to Tier 4. Montreal beating Kohel at 54-26. to And uh, in an exciting game between Maimonides and uh, the y Yeshiva High School Storm. Uh, the Storm uh, edging out the MCAT 69 to 60. They will advance to tier one, and that is the first tier one game that we, that we know about now. And as we speak, we are watching the Mizrahi Mayhem uh, take on the Sky High Hawks from San Diego. Mizrahi now with seeing their lead dwindling, only a four point game, 17-13 here in the early minutes of the second quarter. A foul is called as Shmuley Witkis went up strong with that one. He'll get two free throws. Uh, just a few moments, moments ago, we saw two free throws converted by the big man of the Hawks, the other team, Yakir Silverman. And Witkis' first free throw rolls around and falls out no good. And Witkis now 0 for 3 from the line. Uh, interesting to see if uh, Sky High will maybe uh, institute a uh, hack a Whitkiss strategy as he banks in that one. Whatever works, Whitkiss able to sh bank in that second free throw. So we got a five point game here. Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem holding on to a lead which has been dwindling recently. A foul is now called Alex Sefi. It looks like he converted, he created the contact there. Yeah, you could see he was a little bit unsure what the call was. It looked like he extended that right arm just a bit. Uh, kind of looking for the ref to see what he was going to say. Saw that it was a defensive foul, and he steps to the line to shoot two. The foul called on Noah Farrell. Sefi has been doing a good job. It's really been his sole responsibility to break down the pressure from the man. He's done an excellent job to this point. Uh, in the last few minutes, you've seen him not waiting to get bumped, but in fact creating the contact himself, which is an excellent strategy, especially if you're a bigger, stronger guard. As Sefia knocks down the free throw, 18-50. We've got a one-possession game, Benny, and things are starting to get interesting. Yeah, after a uh, brief scoring drought to end off that, Sefia with a steal now takes it all the way and can't hit it, but rebounded by Wexler, who will kick it back out to Sefia to reset. Excellent follow by Wexler, not just watching the play, but shadowing his man Sefia. And when Sefia couldn't convert, he brought in the rebound, but a turnover now to the Mayhem Waxman. Driving a beautiful no-look bounce pass into the big man, but no good. And we've got a scrum and another foul called on Elon Sanders. And Sevia is just doing a great job of breaking that press, uh, you know, cutting across. And, and that's about the Fuchs is a, a lot of times they seem to be using their legs to try to make themselves wide. And Sevia just trips over them and a foul is going to be called. Elon Sanders now with three fouls. That was costly. Uh, just to notice a trend, Senders playing the first few minutes of the game and then getting into foul trouble. He's key in their offense. Not only is he a big body, uh, but he can really dribble and really handle, and he actually brings it up, uh, playing point guard generally. 
Uh, so he, when he's been out the last few minutes, there's been a bit of a scoring drought for the Mayhem. So they're going to have to look to other guys. Uh, Waxman's definitely going to have to create uh, both Waxmans, both Aron and Albert are going to have to create. They've done a lot of the scoring today thus far. Uh, but now we've got 18-17, the Mayhem lead dwindling to only one. The Mayhem running a play, looking to get a bounce pass into Shmuley Witkis, who was diving on the baseline. But good active defense by Sky High to knock the ball away, and it actually goes off of Witkis. So Sky High will take the ball back, looking to regain the lead, which they haven't had since the first quarter. Oh, baby, and one. The bank is open on a Thursday. The Hawks, Uriel Green getting the ball again at the free throw line. We saw that a few minutes ago. Turning around, quick jump shot. He gets fouled, converts. 19-18, Sky High has the lead with a chance to extend. And that was the exact same play that they ran. Sefia comes up right about half court, just laser beams a pass right over to Green, turns around, gets fouled, absorbs the contact, and able to put on enough strength to get it off the backboard. And you can see the mayhem recognized as it was happening, recognized what was going on, having seen that a few moments ago, didn't get there fast enough, and Green converted. But he can't convert the back end of the and one, so it's 19-18. Sky high now up a point, four minutes and 36 seconds left in the second quarter. Mayhem with some players in foul trouble. They've got Waxman and Senders both on the bench looking for someone else to step in. Three-pointer from the corners up. Gavriel Glazer off the back iron. No good. But a big offensive rebound. A scrum ensues. And unclear what the call was, Benny. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can get a little bit of clarification. It might have been a timeout called. Uh, yeah, that was a full timeout called uh, by Coach Gardner. Um, so the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem get a timeout and will keep the ball. 19-18, the Sky High Hawks hailing from San Diego, California. Up one point on the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. This is a Tier 2 qualifying game. The winner of this game will have a chance to play in Tier 2 for the Tier 2 crown, as we've mentioned before. The Mayhem are hungry for that Tier 2 crown. Their best finish in Saracek to date is a second place finish in Tier 2 coming a couple years ago. Sky High looking to make their mark uh, go deep in the tournament really for the first time. So both these teams are hungry to win today and get into the second round. And one thing that has uh, looked to be derailing the Mizrahi, Duke's Mizrahi Mayhem plan is, is the uh, foul trouble that they've been in. Uh, you know, they opened up the first quarter with a 13-7 to lead and they were rolling. But since uh, getting into a lot of foul trouble, Sky High has fought back and they are now up by a point with 4-13 left in the second quarter. And be sure to stay tuned at halftime. We have the Step It Up Halftime Sleepaway Camp Halftime Show. Sky High falling into their defense here. And an and one for Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. Alan Sokolov getting it to go. He's pumped up. 2019 Fuchs grabs the lead right back with four minutes and 10 seconds left in the first half. A nice play off of the inbounds run by Fuchs after taking that full timeout. And you hope to see something like that. After coming out of a timeout, you want to see a nice play, and that's what they got. And then they just get an offensive rebound, kick it out for a three, and another offensive rebound. Witkis rejected a shot moments ago, but then get ca gets called on the foul as Sokolov goes up strong to the basket. Alan Sokolov converting on the first free throw. Sokolov now with, I believe, five points on the game. So he's been stepping up in this scoring column, especially with Elon Senders on the bench with foul trouble. And Sokolov swishes the second, nothing but net. So two for two from the foul line for Sokolov, three-point lead for the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. And Sokolov with four points on that drive, scoring, getting an offensive rebound after the foul, missed foul shot, and then hitting two. Nearly turned over and then is turned over as a travel is called on Joey Aaron. The Hawks 
able to, again, able to get in their half court set, not having too much pressure or problem with the full court pressure from the Mayhem, but once they get into that half court set, they've been very volatile and have thrown the ball away or been called for violations a number of times. And speaking of violations, another one called on Alan Sokolov. Yeah, and they just felt uh, in a very giving mood. They saw the travel on the other end, and they said, why don't we try that as well? The refs definitely uh, definitely are mock bid on travel calls. Uh, they are uh, paying very careful attention to the footwork, to the dribbling, uh, not letting anything fly, which is really tough for players in today's game, watching their favorite players on in the NBA do whatever really they want uh, in terms of extra steps but not being able to do that themselves. A push off finally called on Alex Sefia. And as Sefia that time gets called for pushing off. You saw last time he got away with it maybe, but this time the ref catches him right in the act and calls a foul. And that appears to be his fourth foul already in the year. And we're still in the first half. That's certainly problematic. Five fouls is a foul out. So Sefia's got to play very carefully the rest of the way. Interesting that Coach Gogo Silverman is keeping Sefia in with those four fouls. He knows what this guy means to the team. Some beautiful ball movement from the Mayhem, who find Noah Rosenblum underneath, finishing from the left side. Rosenblum now applying some pressure to Sefia. Sefia with a gorgeous floater, knocks it in. 24-21, Fuchs Mizrahi lead down to three. This game has been back and forth. Fuchs with a three-point lead as they bring the ball down the court. And Sefia, the first player to get into uh, double digits with uh, his 11th point on that floater. Three-point shot by Rosenblum is way off the mark. Sky high with the ball. Mayhem falling into their man-to-man -man defense. And a charge and a called charge right there. called by Alex Sefia, who can't believe it. And that is his fifth foul. He can't believe it. He thinks uh, that he slid out of the way on that one. Uh, Coach Gogo Silverman does not believe it, uh, but that is the day for Alex Sefian. I don't know if we've ever uh, seen a player foul out in the first half, uh, and especially the leading scorer for the team, nearly at his season average with 11 points, uh, but that is it for Sefia. This uh, is certainly a first for me. Could be a new record in terms of foul out. Nice shot there by Aaron Waxman, going straight down the lane and putting in the floater. Sefia understandably upset on the sideline, uh, but his day seems to be over. Here comes Silverman with a nice move, and he gets to the bucket to go and one. Nice move by the big guy, Silverman. And I was about to say, it's going to be interesting to see where the Hawks go to get their offense with Sefia out, their main ball handler. And right after that, Silverman attacks, gets to the hole, takes the contact and and uh, and hits the shot. Fascinating strategy and a, probably is a big mistake there on Sky High in terms of not sitting um, Sefia, but we'll see how it plays out. It could be that other guys now will come up uh, and step up. They'll certainly need to if they want to stay in this game. They've got a three-point deficit to overcome. One minute, 36 seconds left in the first half as Rosenblum goes to the line for the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem. And it's a tale of two coaches. Uh, Coach Gardner sitting Elon Sanders as soon as he got that third foul. But Coach Gogo Silverman allowing Alex Sefia, he really trusts his players. And unfortunately, in this case, uh, Sefia uh, got that fifth foul, and he is now done for the day. Unfortunate to see him go, as we were really enjoying seeing his ball handling and his playmaking abilities. Rosenblum with his second free throw. Can't get that one to go either, and the rebound brought in by Ezra Arobas. Three-pointer off the mark. Joey Aaron couldn't get that to go. Here comes Sobel. And a shot is no good, and it bounces high off the rim into those rafters. And as we mentioned before, those rafters are out of bounds. A unique little quirk of the gym here in Yeshiva University. The ball will go back to sky high. 
And with under a minute left, we'll see if Sky High will maybe actually attempt to hold for one shot or if they're going to try to get into their offense and score. And uh, Rovas with a fall away jumper, no good. That would have been sweet. The ball now to Aaron Waxman, number 23. The Mayhem with a three-point lead despite not having Albert Waxman and Elon Sanders in the game due to foul trouble. Shot is sent back by the big guy, Yakir Silverman. And that's, you're going to need that strong interior defense from Silverman if these Hawks are going to win the game. Sobel inbounding. Gets it into Gabriel Glazer. He hands it off to Waxman. Waxman now to Rosenblum. Waxman crosses left, then back to the right. Got nothing going. Rosenblum with a pull-up jump shot. No good. But the offensive rebound for the Mayhem. Number 54, Shimmy Jacoby bringing that one in. Long three-pointer, no good. But Waxman with the put-back layup. And as the buzzer sounds, Sky High fails to get a shot off. So 28-23, Fuchs Mizrahi up five on Sky High after the first half. And we're going to send it now down to Levy Herman, who's on the Mayhem sideline with Coach Gardner. The game, it's good to finally talk to somebody that's my height. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of height, I'm yeah. sure you know what it's like playing down low. And you were talking to the guys about you really just wanted to push down low. Yeah. Coming out of the last time out, you guys seemed to really change the game. Mm -hmm. What seemed to work out well for you in the last couple of minutes? Well, I just put a couple uh, different, uh, some different personnel in there, some guys that um, are not so much about uh, numbers you know some guys they really care more about the actual greater good of the team things of that nature man uh we've had some issues with that throughout the year and i think our record reflects that um but the guys that i put in that's why it's a good thing that you have about 13 14 guys on the team you can put the guys in that you know will be going and doing the stuff that you're asking about so i uh, put those guys in and then we pushed the lead out a little bit we got stuck there at 18 for about eight minutes <laughs> you know it was rough yeah, seriously. Well, it seems to be working right now, and you think you're going to keep those guys out, or you're going to still keep trying to mix it up a little? I'm going to mix it up in the second half. I'm going to see if I can plug those guys into some spots where those guys are not as talented. Um, and hopefully those guys can find some spots and put the ball in the basket, and we can get ready for tomorrow. Fantastic, Coach. I'm looking forward to a great second half. Good luck in the locker thank room. You, thank, you. thank you to Levy Herman, our sideline reporter. Thank you, Coach Gardner, and his reflection on the half. A lot of height right there between those two guys. Uh, Fuchs Mizrahi le leaning on their depth here and uh, able to create a five-point lead. Uh, we're going to send it to the Step It Up Basketball Sleepaway Camp Halftime Show and be back with the second half uh, in about eight or nine minutes. Welcome to the Step It Up Basketball Halftime Show on Max Live. Are you ready to step it up? Find out at timetostepitup.com. Step It Up is not your typical basketball camp. We produce unbelievable results. You will get better here. You will get better as a person. You will get better as a player. That's the Step It Up way. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Step It Up Basketball Sleepaway Camp Halftime Show. Step It Up is a sleepaway basketball camp for modern Orthodox boys between the grades of 4th through 12th, a big span. Uh, it's the sixth year of the camp, the camp run by Coach Yogev Verdugo, who's the assistant coach of the men's basketball team here at YU. Um, him, along with the head coach, Coach Elliot Steinmetz, coming on a couple years ago, uh, have really turned this program around. Uh, they had their first home playoff game uh, and first home playoff win this year 
uh, in 18 years in what turned out to be a historic, historic season. Yeah, and to talk about the camp a little bit, this is the pre premier program for a Shomer Shabbos kid who wants to have Minyanim, learning, and, Shab and Shabbat, as well as a summer full of quality ball. Uh, at the camp, they bring in other top teams from around the nation to play against these players. They have an incredible facility, incredible trainers, a staff. They have Rabbi Gabi Danieli from YU uh, as their camp rabbi, and of, co and of course, Yogev's mom as the camp mom. And I'm looking right now at the facilities. They're located at Colby Sawyer College in New London, New Hampshire, a private 200-acre college nestled in the Lake Sunapee region. Uh, they have gorgeous facilities that include six indoor basketball courts, three outdoor courts, a swimming pool, a turf field, grass fields, a rock climbing wall, a weight room, tennis courts, baseball fields, lake to swim and kayak in, and much, much more. And it's incredible. And just if you look at the field of Sarachek players who have gone, there are 36 players playing in this year's Sarachek who have gone to Step It Up Basketball. Almost 20% of the players have attended Step It Up Basketball uh, Sleep Away Camp. It's an incredible experience. And hopefully uh, later on in the tournament, we're going to be able to hear from some of those players, uh, hear from Coach Yogev, uh, and we're very excited to hear that. And actually, four of the YU players uh, have attended uh Brian Itzkowitz, Ellie Mammon, Shelby Rosenberg, Shia Weiss. Rosenberg and Weiss really the two possibly best players and key, two, two key players on the team this year. Uh, Shelby Rosenberg finishing his YU career with over 1,000 points. So clearly these, these aren't just any ball players attending this camp. These are the best of the best uh, in terms of Jewish high school talent. Yeah, and Rosenberg, you know, first team all-conference in at YU in 2015-2016. Shia Weiss averaging 15 points per game, shooting over 50% from the field. And I see how Coach Yogev, I come a lot of times early in the morning, and I'll see Coach Yogev working with the Max team. He will, he, he gets them into shape. He gets them, you know, he wants to make them better players, and the players appreciate that as well. And I remember I had a conversation with uh, Coach Simons at one point about why he brought in Coach Verdugo and the, uh, thing that he highlighted that I remember that he highlighted the most uh, was his skill his ability to develop skills in the players um, it's not just you know coaching in general in addition to really kind of you know pumping up their confidence and, and, and gaining experience uh, coach Brugo is known for his ability to really to really um, develop players skills which is extremely important uh, and you see it really pays off in tournaments like this Okay, we are going to send it to a commercial break. Uh, a few minutes left here in this halftime break. 28-23 again. Fuchs Mizrahi up on Sky High. A deer pinch out with Benny Stemmen. We're going to send it to a commercial break, and we'll be back with second half, second half action right after this. such a thing. You have a yeshiva university where you have students come together in a university yeshiva setting. 150 guys at a tish, rocking, singing, really getting involved in what the Shabbos experience is. Welcome back to the game between the Mizrahi Mayhem and the Sky High Hawks. We have a quick treat for you. Coach Golan Silverman is with our sideline reporter, Simi Warsaw. It's Simi Warsaw here with Coach Silverman. Coach, listen, you guys are only down by five, but 
You know, your star player, Alex Sefia, fouled out already. What is your game plan going forward? Uh, for them to continue doing what they were doing the first half, w working with each other, and we really got to focus on our rebounds the second half. We want any chance at winning this game. It seemed like you guys got off to a slow start, but uh, you guys got right back in it. Coach, what do you think is the game plan on offense? Without your star player, you know, you don't have any aggressiveness uh, we have seen so far. Are you going to be showing uh, three-pointers, more, uh, more outside shooting without your uh, star point guard? Uh, I, we're going to focus on my brother, Yakir, to have him take over the game now. So it's his time to shine. And I think he's up to the task, so I think we'll be okay. All right, Coach. Good luck. Good luck to you guys in the second half. What was that? Good luck to you guys in the second half, Coach. Thank you very much. Back to you guys in the idea. Simi, thank you so much. Coach Golan Silverman talking about the first half that was. They've got a five-point hole, Benny, uh, and they've got a lot, uh, a lot to contend with now after that first half. Yeah, and Coach Silverman said said what they're, he told us their plan. You know, they're going to go into Yakir Silverman, his brother. I don't think it's favoritism. I think that's what they need right now. He is their, their main ability to score. Sefia actually scored almost half of Sky High's points in that first half, had those beautiful assists uh, to Green for those other four points. So he has had been the catalyst for much of their offense, and they're going to now need to transition that. Now, on the other hand, we have the, the Mizrahi Mayhem, who when they had foul trouble, they benched their guys who had foul trouble, and their bench players actually were able to take back the lead from Sky High, extended to, to a five-point lead. And it's going to be interesting to see in the second half, you know, whether Coach Gardner uh, maintains most of the second half with his starters, or if he actually brings in a healthy balance of bench players throughout. You're absolutely right, Benny. Different uh, coaching decisions were the storyline of that first half. Sefia will not be playing the rest of the game. So as Coach Golan Silverman pointed out, they're going to be relying heavily on Yakir Silverman. He's averaging a double-double. He's got 15 points and just over 10 rebounds. So the guy can flat out play. But uh, they're going to have trouble without Alex Sefia. The Mayhem, on the other hand, have been lying on their bench but yet have a lead. So they're in good shape. We'll see who they play, whether they go back to the starters or continue with the bench players who have played so well thus far. And, and we see right off the bat, uh, Elon Sanders is starting off the third period on the bench. Again, uh, Sanders had, uh, I believe, six points in that, in that first, uh, I believe it was all in the first quarter, actually, did not score in the second quarter. Uh, and as a big offensive force, it's going to be interesting to see how Fuchs comes out uh, in the second quarter. Uh, the players are set, the players are on the court, and uh, the refs, actually, uh, does not seems ha the refs have not returned yet from their halftime break. Uh, we always talk about you know the players are running back and forth. You know they get they get breaks on the bench. They get to take a sip of water and you know catch their breath. But the refs uh, they don't get to take a break. They're running the entire you know the entire game uh, and they don't get to sub. And they have to be faster than the players because they have to always be set before they get back. Um, and the refs are now walking out onto the court. They look refreshed. They look ready to go and the players look like they're ready for some second half basketball. And it's going to be Alan Sokoloff inbounding the ball for the Mayhem on the sideline. That's Yehuda Fant with the ball setting up the Mayhem offense. Mayhem working it inside. And it is taken up strong by Alan Sokloff. Can't get the bucket to fall, but they will go to the free throw line. 28-23 as we start the second half. Fuchs Mizrahi with a lead over the Sky High Hawks. And Sokloff, we've seen, he opened up the game you know, with an outside shot that he missed. And since then, he has been attacking the hole, taking contact, and, and making great shots. And what you love to see there is you love to see players move without the ball. You know, it's very easy to move when you have the ball, but players often forget to move without the ball. He did it right there, and he's getting rewarded with a trip to the charity strip. Second free throw is up for Sokolov, and that one does fall. Mizrahi now in their press looking to trap. Silverman with the ball. He'll take it up himself. Sky High breaking the pressure. Here's Silverman on the baseline with a nice reverse layup. Gets it to go. Now 29-25, cutting the lead to four. And we've seen Silverman work in the post, but it's nice to see him take a drive to the hole and with a finish with a beautiful reverse layup. Sokolov to Rosenblum, receives the pass 
Three-pointer up to the right wing. Swish! Nothing but net for Sokolov. And Sokolov has been doing it all. He just took it to the hole. Now he's showing his range. And uh, he's having himself quite a game. Harrell Amsalam with a scoop layup off the pressure from the mayhem. So Sky High breaking the pressure thus far and converting for two quick buckets. Here's Amsalam with some pressure. Sobel in the... Nearly losing it on a bit of an errant pass. Uh, but the mayhem will set the ball back up. Good patience here by the Mizrahi mayhem. We're playing without starters, Ilan Senders and Albert Waxman. A three is up, but no good. Gabriel Glazer couldn't get to go. The rebound brought in by Silverman. Uh, but a steal by Rosenblum and a over and back call. And Rosenblum contending that he did not have possession when he touched it before he crossed the half court line. Uh, the ref says, no, that was a control tip. You had possession and then went back court. And the ball will go right back to the Sky High Hawks. Here comes Silverman now. We'll be doing the, a bulk of the ball handling now that Alex Sefia is out of the game. The foul is called on Sobel as there was some hand checking. Sobel can't believe it. And that is the third, I believe the third foul on Sobel. So we'll see. Uh, and it looks like uh, Elon Sanders and a few other players are getting ready to check in for the mayhem. Joey Aaron can't convert on that crash to the basket. Here's Sokolov bringing the ball up. Oh, beautiful passing from the Mayhem, but Rosenblum can't convert underneath. And he kicks it back. Now Sokolov from the corner, no good, gets his own rebound. Goes up second chance, opportunity is good. Good effort there by Alan Sokolov. And Sokolov knew, he saw the second he released it, he knew it was off and he ran in trying to get that rebound. Got it, put it back for two, and he now has 12 points on the day. A nice pass into Arovas. But Coach Gogo Silverman calling a timeout before the pass was made. Uh, the points will, will not count. And uh, we have now, with 5.29 left in the third quarter, Fuchs Mizrahi leading Sky, the Sky High Hawks 34 to 27. Now, Adir, it seems that the, not only, I thought, when, when Coach Gogo Silverman said that Yakir Silverman would be taking the majority of the offensive uh, uh, roll on in the second half. I thought he meant down low. But what we've seen is uh, Yakir being the ball handler, taking it from the top and trying to attack. Uh, do you think we're going to see it more of the same, or do you think he's going to try to maybe change that up? I absolutely think we're going to see it more of the same. The key really for Sky High thus far has been not only breaking the pressure of the mayhem, but breaking it without then getting into sort of a hurried attack. Not only do they have to break the pressure, but they have, then have to settle into their offense, uh, be able to take their time and get a good shot. They've had a lot of trouble at different points intermitt intermittently throughout the game. They've been doing a good job as of late. Uh, so Silverman, yeah, Kier Silverman coming in, doing the ball handling duties, uh, has been doing a good job. We'll see if that continues. But Benny, I anticipate that he will continue to have the rock in his hands. Uh, and this game ultimately will come down to him for Sky High on the offensive end. And, and Alan Sokoloff already only two and a half minutes into this second half, already has six points in the quarter. Uh, and here's Silverman underneath trying to get the bucket. Good defense by Senders. And another layup uh, is blown by Joey Aaron. So Sky High missing a couple layups there. They need to convert. They're down eight. Excuse me, they're down seven. As the ball sails out of bounds, Elon Senders pass deflected by Yakir Silverman. And you see some of those starters from the, from the uh, first half. Senders and Wick is coming back in as Sokolov hits another shot. He now has eight points uh, in the quarter. Sokolov has been very impressive. Received the pass from Senders on the left block and then converted the layup. And here's Amsalem now. You've seen him do that twice. They break the pressure. Amsalem finds himself there for a scoop layup. So that's something Sky High is going to want to look for. And that's the double-edged sword. When you put pressure, if they break it, sometimes you give up very easy layups. And some good patience now by the Mizrahi Mayhem. They know they've got time on their side. They're up seven, but a turnover 
as Senders tried to receive the ball. Oh, nice behind the back move. And an and one layup. That was absolutely gorgeous. Joey Aaron going behind the back and then finishing with the left hand and one. Joey Aaron, what a beautiful play. Steals the ball, going, putting on the moves, going behind the back, finishing it with his left hand and getting the foul. That was a beautiful play. I mean, that was absolutely positively beautiful. Joey Aaron going to the line now, looking to make this lead or this deficit five, and he does. Five, excuse me, four-point lead now for Fuchs as Joey Aaron converts a gorgeous and one. Four minutes and 23 seconds left. The Mayhem with their starters back on the floor despite the first half foul trouble. So Senders gives it to Sokolov. He's had the hot hand, being very aggressive thus far today. A nice pass, but sent, black, sent back by Rosen. And another layup is off the mark. And Yakir Silverman saying, welcome to the block party. Gets the rebound ultimately, takes it across the court, uh, and is unable to finish the layup. Shmuley Witkis was looking for vengeance on Silverman. Couldn't get it. Here comes Witkin again with an offensive rebound, and then is fouled. So you're seeing now, Benny, some problems. Yeah, Keir Silverman looking to take a little bit more of the uh, guard duties. Playing up top, definitely offensively, defensively a little bit as well. Uh, and you're seeing a hole is opening up underneath. And Shmuley Witkis has been taking advantage on the offensive glass. That's right. Shmuley Witkis over there getting double teamed, absorbs that contact, going to the line for two. But we have seen he has been struggling from the line. So uh, these are by no means guaranteed points. But nonetheless, Witkis knocks it down, cools the other side of the pillow. We call that the uh, reverse commentator jinx. The reverse commentator jinx. Excellent. Sokolov getting a standing ovation from the crowd. He's been excellent so far today. He will check out as Aaron Waxman comes in. Yeah, he definitely deserves that. Currently the game's leading score with 14 points. And Sky High without their point guard, Alex Sepia, who fouled out in the first half, is hanging around. Looking to score here to make it a one possession game. Here's Joey Aaron probing. Amsalem underneath. Oh, and a beautiful bounce pass to Ezra Arobas, who puts it in for two. A beautiful play. It's nice to see other players from the Hawks getting involved in this offense because the reality is Silverman will not be able to do it on his own. He will need help from the others. But bang! Long three from Albert Waxman who looks to get into the act after being held quiet so far. 40-34. to 34. Fuchs Mizrahi up six. And I could be wrong, but from my memory, I have not seen either of the Waxman um, of Fuchs shoot anything other than three balls, but that one worked out very nicely for them. Those guys can bomb from long range. The bank shot from Uriel Green was no good, but now a steal. A ball in the hands of Joey Aaron of Sky High. He'll pull up from three. He gets fouled, and no good. Albert Waxman not happy with the call, but looked to have gotten Joey Aaron on the arm, and Aaron will go to the line for three free throws. I think Waxman is, I, I think he understands the call. I think he's more angry at himself. He knew, he saw the guy pull up, uh, and, and he wanted that block, but uh, he got a lot of body as well. Another foul for Waxman. Joey Aaron at the line, knocks that one down as the sky-high crowd applauses. And uh, Shimmy Jacoby attempting to check in, uh, but that was a foul on a three, so I believe the buzzer will come on the next sound. And that shot is called off. It looks like a lane violation. I believe it was against the shooter. Aaron must have stepped over the line before the ball hit the rim. So one out of three for Joey Aaron, five point game as Aaron Waxman brings the ball up. Senders at the free throw line now. Albert Waxman looking inside for Witkis and it gets it to go. Beautiful ball movement there. Waxman the point guard probing, cutting, and then finding Witkis underneath for an easy layup. Yeah, and they know that he's drawing a little attention from around and, and that just freed up uh, that just freed up Witkiss right there, and there he gets another board, really proving that X-Factor status today. Amsalem sails one over the rim. No good, and here comes Witkiss back inside. Can't get that one to fall, but gets his own rebound. Can't get it again. He's been getting a lot of offensive rebounds lately, so Sky High is going to have to try to keep him out of the lane. And another turnover. Joey Aaron has it stripped by Sobel. Here's Waxman on the baseline, maneuvering Finds Wickis again, can't get it to go. Long rebound. Comes out to Aaron Waxman, who is fouled by Joey Aaron. And that's now three plays in, the, in a row 
where the Mayhem have driven into the paint and just dished it to Whitkiss. Uh, he's had a little trouble finishing, but if he begins to finish those shots, Fugues can put this game away very quickly. Harrell Amsalam checking out as Gershon Brookler comes in. Number three for Sky High. Brookler with a quick steal, looking for his teammate Aaron, and can't get it to him as Sobel steals it. And, and it and looks it like, I believe, that he dribbled it uh, on the line. So I think he dribbled it on the line, but I think a foul was actually called uh, as the refs thought he got pushed. Wow, dear. You have amazing eyes. Waxman now a long three. Steph Curry range in and out, no good. Here's Elon Senders with the rebound and puts it in over the outstretched arms of Arovas. And you love to see the aggressiveness that Senders is playing with, even with those three fouls. Senders using the big body to get position underneath. Yeah, Keir Silverman frustrated with the no call, but he couldn't finish from inside the post. Here comes Senders. Whoop de doo. Buckaroo. Senders. Spin move. Up and under. Right hand from the left side. Unbelievable. As uh, one of my, one of uh, a, a dear colleague, Ari Feiger, likes to say, that was some razzle dazzle shake and bake. No doubt about it. Arovas can't get the shot from the right elbow to go. Under a minute left here in the third quarter. The lead is 11. Biggest lead of the game now for the Mayhem. And they make it bigger. Aaron Waxman knocking it down 4-3. And the lead is up to 14. The Waxmen are feeling it from deep range. Both of them draining threes all over. The lead is now 14 for Fuse. It was only a matter of time for the Waxman brothers to get going. And they've certainly got going here. But right back at you. Gershon Brooklyn steps up and says, I don't think so. We're not going into this quarter break with a 14-point deficit. He cuts it to 11. 49-38 with 10, 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Senders now from the free throw line again. Looks for Waxman. Waxman another dial up from distance, but no good. The rebound now in the outlet pass to Aaron from long range. Can't get it to go as the third quarter ends. 49 for Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem, 38 for the Sky High Hawks. We're sending it back and we'll be back with fourth quarter action. Welcome back to Thrilling Thursday, day one of the Red Saracek Tournament 2016 edition. 49-38, the Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem up 11 points on the Sky High Hawks. My name is Adir Pinchot alongside my partner, Benny Statman. And we'd like to take this time that we have until game starts to thank a few of our sponsors. Uh, we'd like to thank Dougie's for lunch today. It was very delicious. And uh, for dinner, we're going to be having uh, some food from the Teaneck Doghouse, which from last year, I remember, was tremendous. Uh, and we'd like to thank, as well, uh, Sammy's Bagels for breakfast today. And uh, now we are getting ready as Sky High will take out the ball from midcourt. Here comes Sky High now. They're down double digits, 11 points as we enter this fourth quarter. They're going to need some magic. Their point guard, Alex Sefia, after falling out in the first half, is firmly seated on the bench. So they're going to need some magic. I'm looking for Gershon Brookler maybe to hit a couple threes. He hit one a few moments ago, but certainly a lot is going to fall on the shoulders of Yakir Silverman, number 10. And right there we had a turnover, an errant pass by Sky High. Initially in the game, I thought it might just be, you know, the, the first game jitters, but now we've seen them make a lot of errant passes throughout the game, and that's something that they're going to really have to tighten up in this fourth quarter if they want to come back. Senders with a beautiful reverse layup with the right hand. The Mayhem have been rode their bench for a lot of the second quarter. The bench was able to get them out to a lead. They brought back the starters now during the second half, uh, and they've really been clicking as of late. They've got a 13-point lead now. A near steal by Albert Waxman, recovered by Brooklyn. Brooklyn, a beautiful pass into number 10, Silverman. Can't get it to go now. Joey Aaron lining up a three. Also no good, and the rebound to Albert Waxman of the Mayhem. 
Waxman winding and dining. Left hand no good, falls short. And a travel is called as Joey Aaron went to the floor after having brought in the rebound. Yeah, and Aaron there trying initially to get the charge, doesn't get it, goes for the rebound and, and falls to the floor, and that's, that's going to give the ball right back to the man. Waxman thought about a three, instead drives baseline. The floater is no good, and the foul is called on number zero, Shmuley Witkis. That's not a big problem, only with two fouls in the fourth quarter. You know, he'll be able to stay in. Witkis has been a problem underneath on the offensive glass doing his duties. A beautiful little jump shot there, number 13, Uriel Green. He's dangerous from that free throw line. Yeah, and Green, that is his uh, that is his spot. That's his sweet spot. He's hit, I think he's three for three from there. It doesn't matter if you foul him, he'll nail it. Oriole sporting those flashy green shoes. Mayhem are going to have to watch for him in that free throw line area as he reels in the rebound after the Sobel missed the three-pointer. Up to Joey Aaron. Good defense by Sobel. Now the three from Oriole Green, short off the front iron. And that is just beyond his distance of the free throw. You could see it came straight off the front of the iron. Uh, if it would have been a step closer, that might have been his perfect, perfect range. But Sky High finding some open shots. They're just going to have to convert. Six minutes left, 11-point game. The three by Albert Waxman is way off. Beautiful save by Sokoloff into Senders. Cross-court pass. Albert Waxman finding himself open again. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Albert Waxman says, you give me that second opportunity, I'm going to make you pay. And that was beautiful ball movement by, Mizra by Mizrahi. Uh, Sokoloff getting the hockey assist, saving the ball, waiting, and getting it to Waxman eventually for the three. And Silverman goes crashing through the lane. Couldn't get it to go, but brings in the offensive rebound. So the sky-high Hawks will get another opportunity. They're down 14 as they turn the ball over. Here comes Waxman. Waxman smoothly gliding in for the layup, putting in with the right hand, sneaking it under the arm of the defender, Joey Aaron. And the lead is now 16, biggest lead of the game. Fuchs Mizrahi Mayhem firmly in control. With five and a half, just under, five and a half minutes left in this fourth quarter. And that was the first uh, shot by Albert Waxman. That was not a three-pointer this game, but uh, it was a beauty. And now uh, the Hawks looking to get into the defense. Another errant pass, and that might be what will ultimately lead to their demise as Mizrahi now takes over. Albert Waxman left wide open for another three, uh, but he's not able to drain it. A fight for the rebound on the floor. A jump ball is going to be called. And that will be mayhem ball. Waxman with a long three-pointer. Again, Waxman is heating up this guy. When he gets going, he can be hazardous for the other team. 19-point lead now as Waxman knocks in another three. And Waxman on a personal 8-0 run, uh, extending the lead to 19, and with only 4.39 left in the game, uh, it, it's almost uh, desperation time for the Sky High Hawks. Silverman bakes in the free throw, cutting the lead to 18. That seems to be the big men's strategy today. There has been, the bank has been open for many of these players, that's true. Here come the mayhem now. Senders bringing the ball up. Waxman lining up yet another three off the back iron, no good. And the ball sails out of bounds. Here's Harrell Amsalem finding the big man inside, but Silverman can't get the ball, can't get the bucket to go. Mayhem again with an 18-point lead, four minutes left now. Here's Sokoloff. And his cross-court pass sails through the hands of number five, Noah Farrell.
and Sky High inbounding the ball, looking to get something going. They turn the ball over once again, and a travel is called. It looked like it was going to be between a foul and travel, and the ref said that the travel occurred first. It's going to be Sky High ball, 348 left to go in the game, 18-point deficit. It's going to be very, very tough. I, I, I almost want to say desperation mode uh, has very much ensued, and, and it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Sky High looks to shoot a little bit outside. It looks like Yakir Silverman calling for it on the three-point line, but uh, the turnover made by Joey Aaron. Albert Waxman takes it coast to coast, uh, scoring an easy two-point, and it is now a 20-point deficit. The lead is up to 20 points with three and a half minutes left. Sky High running out of gas as the depth of the Mizrahi Mayhem has begun to take its toll on the Sky High Hawks. And without their point guard, Al uh, Alex Sefia, you know, you can see that Sky High is having trouble handling the ball. Um, and they will retain possession for the time being. Um, but I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank some of our staff working today's game. Uh, cameraman Joseph Benadere, Michael Osborne, and Eliezer Barman. Sideline reporters Levy Herman and Simi Warsaw. Our scoreboard operators Jack Grantro, Mayor Fink, Shamina Bosni, Yesh Ginsberg. Our writer Gary Fetter. Our photographer Ephraim Landa. And I'll just take a break for a second as Mordechai Blau gets an offensive rebound, puts it in, and this game is almost over. Uh, and just to thank also producer Jacob Harrison, Leo Corman, Yosef Frankel. Uh, and of course, my wonderful partner, Adir Pinchot. And Benny, thank you as well. Benny, running Max Live last year, his president came back to help out, uh, came back from UCLA Dental School uh, to help out with the production this year. So we owe a lot uh, and express a lot of gratitude as Sky High brings in a whole set, uh, not quite five players, but four new players. And it looks like uh, Coach Gogo is throwing, it, uh, throwing in the towel uh, bring in some players, get them, get, getting them some valuable experience uh, in Sarachek. And the ball is out of bounds. Looks like Noah Pharrell stepped on the line. So following this game, we have still two, and, two minutes and 30 seconds left, but following this game, the Mizrahi Mayhem will advance, advance to Tier 2. Uh, we mentioned a couple times already, but they've never actually won Tier 2, so their best finish is Tier 2 second place, so they'll be hungry and they'll be looking for a tier two crown to bring back to Cleveland. Interestingly enough, the, the seeding system and the brackets at Saracek are a little bit confusing, but Fuchs will actually, assuming that they win, uh, will be advancing to a second tier two qualifier. There are two days, you have to win two games to get into tier two. Uh, so they haven't yet guaranteed themselves a spot. But they will have the opportunity to play for that tier two crown, assuming they win tomorrow as well. Here come the mayhem. Two minutes left on the clock now, Aaron Waxman. Into the center of the lane. Floater is off the back iron, but Blau with a rebound and put back. <laughs> Turnover is forced by Ezra Arovas, number 42. The ball now being brought up by number 30. Tani Kaplan. Picked off by Aaron Waxman. Here comes Waxman. Alley-oop thrown to Rosenblum and can't get it to go, but Blau with a rebound. A second rebound for Blau. Second attempt, no good. Yeah, and not, the ball's out of bounds. And not a lot of size right now in the game for Sky High, as you see offensive rebound after offensive rebound. Uh, but they, they, did, they gave a valiant effort coming into Sarachek. Uh, unfortunately, they're going to come up a little short, but that was a beautiful three. Arobas for three. Sky High looks to have a few younger guys in the game now. I would imagine these guys aren't all upperclassmen. Um, so getting some guys some experience uh, for, the, uh, for the future. So that's always nice. A big three by Arobas. Ezra Arobas, number 42, knocking one down. Waxman looking for a three of his own. No good. And here comes Uriel Green. Green with a lefty layup, no good. Wanted the foul. No call, we've got 37 seconds left now. Yeah. 
and Sky High will now be in Tier 4. They will play Saturday night in a Tier 4 semifinal game right here in the Max Stern Athletic Center. Uh, it remains to be seen who they will be playing against. And the Dukes Mizrahi fans on their feet supporting their team. As they are uh, running out the clock. Three, two, one, and that will be it. Fuchs Mizrahi, Mayhem 65, Sky High Hawks 44. We're gonna take a quick break and be back with some post-game interviews. There are over 15,000 ways to take your coffee at Dunkin'. Every cup is unique as you, always fresh with that signature smooth taste. We take pride in every cup, but only one is your coffee, your Dunkin'. America runs on Dunkin'. I came to YU to pursue a further Jewish education. Participating in a collegiate athletic team has been challenging. Yeshiva University provides an incredible opportunity to find a balance between academics, athletics, extracurriculars. Fellow students show their pride for their teams in coming to games like Max Madness, our senior night, wearing their blue and white colors. The Yeshiva University Athletics Department breaks the stereotype of what it means to be a Jewish athlete. So while I came here for a Jewish education, I'm walking away with much more. Welcome back, Fuchs Mizrahi with a big win here on Thursday of Sarachek, their first game, winning to have the opportunity to play to get into uh, Tier 2. Uh, Ilan, we'll start with you. You've been on the team for a few years. Um, what does this Sarachek mean to you, and, and what are you guys hoping to accomplish here, uh, hopefully playing in Tier 2 the rest of the way? It means the world to me. Being a senior and this being my third year, uh, it means the world to me. And uh, being here for another opportunity to win the Tier 2 championship is just a once in a lifetime opportunity. And it's a great, it's a great feeling. Especially being here with my boys. Yeah, I'm gonna turn to, to Albert over there. Uh, so I, uh, I, I think, so you, I, I believe it took you until the uh, third quarter to take a shot inside the, the uh, three point arc. Uh, a little like Steph Curry out there just shooting from range all day. Do you, does that confidence, has that been instilled with, in you over the season and through new, your new coach, Coach Gardner? Well, I'll give him the credit, but it's been something I've been doing since I was a little kid. Um, I, love to shoot the, I love to shoot the ball. Thankfully, these guys let me shoot it. Um, and um, we're lucky to get this win. We got three more to go. Got three more wins, guys. Thank you, Albert. We got Alan talking up here. Alan, these guys were out uh, with some foul trouble in the first half, but you really came on strong. Uh, did anything that coach said to you, anything that went through your mind in terms of recognizing that you needed to pick up the slack? I just knew I needed to play with heart, get everyone involved and really play as a team. Attack the basket, get away from the three-point shot, and just play hard together. Awesome, awesome. Well, congratulations, Thank guys. Thanks Shout so out much. to Yonatan, all those people back back at home, Arye, Jonah, and Joey all the way in Israel. All the boys from overseas, thanks for the support. Hey, hey, 6%, how about thanks that? Thanks so much, guys. Let's go, Bert. Fuchs Mizrahi, man, with a big win here on thrilling Thursday, first day of Sarachek. I'm a deer pin shot. Uh, Benny Statman, stay tuned. We've got more Sarachek action coming up right after this. <laughs> 